going live now. Hello everyone, on, on today's uh, live stream, I think we're pushing a uh, live stream, uh, I think it's like 17 or 18 at this particular point. Uh, we're sitting here uh, nice and comfortably, uh, this is uh, Southampton International Airport. Uh, you know, we're going to be doing a nice little flight. I, you know, Whenever I think of the United Kingdom, I always think of uh, traveling the countryside by train, but I don't have a train simulator that will do the entire countryside, so I decided to fly by air along the rail. So we're going to be traveling up to London today. Uh, joining us today is going to be someone from the United Kingdom, uh, since I know nothing about the UK myself. Um, I believe his name is Simon, if I recall correctly. You can introduce yourself. Everything okay there? Hmm, unexpected. So uh, something seems to have gone on there with that connection, but uh, we'll give it a couple moments to kind of see if uh, we can reconnect that. Uh, did we... Oh. All right, uh, he'll be joining us in a few minutes uh, once we do get up in the air. But before that, we'll go ahead and uh, kind of get everything set up here. So let's get this sucker started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bop myself down. Again, this is a very, very simple little aircraft. Not a lot to it. I love how the fact my two starters are basically going to be circuit breakers. Click both of those on. Uh, we're going to make sure the fuel is turned on. We're going to crack the throttle just a teeny tiny bit here. Hey, we got him back. Uh, did hey, we lose you? I did lose you. Yeah, sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting the aircraft started Just now. Aircraft started. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself while I get us rolling? Uh, yeah, I'm Simon. I live uh, near Northampton in in the uh, UK, and uh, but I come from London originally, so I sort of know where we're going. And I have worked in a few of the towns we're going to go past, so I know a bit of where we're going anyway. All right, awesome. And now, again, we well, love having a, a specialist on this stuff because I certainly do not know this geography nearly well. I think we got the echo now solved. Yeah, we got it. Awesome. Uh, that should be a little bit better for you, Baker. All right, so uh, now that we got this thing started, we're going to be taking off and kind of cruise a little bit off to the left. I'm just going to check my notes here. I usually don't like getting rolling too, too quickly here in case everybody's driving us on time, but that's perfectly fine. So we'll go ahead and uh, get rolling. All right, uh, can you tell us anything about the Southampton Airport? Uh, not a lot. It's not a massive airport. It's uh, used a lot by people on cruises because uh, it's only about a 20 minute cab ride from the cruise terminals. And it's handy, especially for people on your side of the pond who want to nip over to Paris because it's a lot quicker to get a, do a two hour flight over to Paris than mocking about doing the Eurostar. But people do like to use the Eurostar as well. <laughs> now, I'm assuming the Eurostar is the train. Yes. Gotcha. Again, you have to pardon my ignorance here, because uh, where we have, uh, we've done a pretty good job of eliminating uh, public transportation, unfortunately. All right, we've got a <laughs> good collection of folks kind of coming over on that side. Oh, they'll be joining us in just a few moments. Kind of, kind of head us down here. Uh, this is going to be kind of interesting. Uh, when we were experimenting with this a little bit earlier, uh, we found out that if we try to follow on the rail directly, it, uh, there's some pretty nasty overpasses, underpasses, stuff like that that tend to interfere. So we're probably going to use a couple feet, but what at the very least fly, you know, IFR. I follow railways. All right, let's go ahead and cruise on down. Let's see who we've got joining us today. I see somebody's about to rear end me right there. I got a smoking tire. I got a gentleman named Ted. I got somebody named Piku. Uh, I think we've seen him a few times on these 11 o'clock ones. I just got to kind of keep on cruising. Of course, we're flying away from the wind as opposed to into the wind here, but I'm not going to worry about that too, too much. Again, we're just here to have some fun this morning. We're not here to go too, too crazy. Now, uh, something you said is uh, you have the cruise ship terminal, correct? Yeah, I'm just looking at this. Uh, sorry, can I just interrupt a minute, Philip? Absolutely. Uh, you're running down the taxiway, and I'm still parked up. So <laughs> I'd say uh, double check the, the uh, connection right there. Um, you can always uh, sign out of your controls and sign back into it, and it shouldn't glitch me out or anything like that. Let's try that. All right, I'm just going to take a quick look around, make sure everybody's all set behind me. I've got a few folks on that side of the airport. I've got a few folks on that side of the airport. Uh, I've got like a thousand windows open going on all this one. All right, it's fine. Yep. Oh, uh, speaking of which, uh, joining us today in the chat, in case you missed that phone, is Antonio. You probably remember a couple weeks ago. These are gas turbine experts. So if you have any questions about any of that, feel free to kind of throw at them and uh, see if that uh, works out. But other than that, we're going to go ahead and get this thing uh, rolling here. I think we're right on schedule, 11 a.m. Awesome. I love it when I do things properly. That never happens. And we're just going to get going. Uh, hopefully, uh, Simon can kind of link back up with us and just say, ah, good morning. All right, get this thing going. This aircraft's cool because uh, we could do some flaps for takeoff or we could do no flaps for takeoff. It's not, not really particularly critical on this one, but uh, we're going to go do this. I'm on the East USA server for anybody who's joining us this morning. 
All right, go ahead and give it full power. And I believe I'm going to smack into somebody named uh, Netro American. We're just going to kind of pass through. Excuse me, sir. Give this thing a nice gentle tug, and we are on our way. Uh, were we able to uh, resynchronize there, Simon? No, I'm still at the gate. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. So I think what I'll do, I'll keep in the audio, but I'll just, I'll just follow you on YouTube, and you can just fly. Perfect. Okay. So uh, we're going to do the best we can. Is as that, far if you're as that okay with that? Okay. Yeah, I'll try to describe it and see it. All right, we are now on our way. So the first things first is uh, we got to locate the railroad, which we're going to be following right there, which conveniently for us is uh, right there, which makes it pretty easy. I'm going to go kind of swing over on this side. You can see the tremendous amount of trains here. We have a very, very large size depot and basically just going to be following this all the way into London today. Uh, total flight time is going to be about a half an hour, which is a pretty typical for us. Now, when I originally did this, like I said, I did something a little bit more suicidal. I basically kind of did one of these. And we basically hovered this one all the way to our destination, which is fun, except for the fact the trees here are a little nasty for us. So we'll enjoy a little bit of it while we still can. So uh, what else can you tell us about Southampton? Okay, well, it, this is going to be hard because, of course, I'm watching you flying and you're somewhere else already. But uh, at the <laughs> moment on my YouTube thing, you're flying over Eastleigh Depot, which is um, where... Uh, was the railway works place. You're now going along. Oh, I'm trying to work out how to do this best. Um, <laughs> we got a nice little river on I the right there. I think I'm going to have to kill flight simulator. Oh, right, and I see he's going a little bit braver here, but I'm going to try to keep this a little bit lower. Kind of keep an eye out. I think uh, your control has just had a release a couple weeks ago, or at least this week, and it could have been interfering with that one. Oh, uh, by the way, Simon, inside of your controls, uh, do you have the aircraft selected as the CTLS? I did, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm just curious. Okay, so definitely, yeah, sometimes we run into technical difficulties, but it seemed to be working initially, so I'm not sure why it's not updating position there. I don't All know right. why it's, yeah, I don't know why it's gone. So, yeah. uh, oh. It happens. Let's see catch. All right, let's it go happens. ahead and do our low altitude. I think shift. what I'll do, I'll, I'll get out the flight simulator and I'll come back onto YouTube with you, follow you on YouTube, because I should still keep talking to you on Discord. Now, you're going to find this kind of interesting, but um, I'm showing zero airspeed. Oh, I see why, because I uh, completely... Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> the aircraft had actually shut itself off completely. Interesting. Uh, again, these are some fun little excitements here. But again, this stuff happens all the time. All right, let's go ahead and follow our little rail here. It appears to be following the nice low part of the land, which is uh, typically going to be along any sort of like rivers or lakes or anything like that. Um, you don't want to be flying across mountains because, you know, mountains are difficult to get up and down over reliably and safely. All right, going through, uh, this is, I believe, Shawford now. I can't pronounce any of these things properly, even though it's English. Uh, Simon, what oh, were you we saying about up. Oscar Wilde earlier? Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, Oscar Wilde did say that the... Uh, Americans and English are only separated by their language. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> right. All right, we'll go sneak up here. Uh, you chose a Beechcraft Bonanza here. It was a little bit faster. Again, we're trying to keep a little bit of altitude here. Coming up on uh, Winchester. Anything you can tell us about Winchester? Winchester, well, big thing here is Winchester Cathedral, which was uh, started in the 11th century. But uh, my favourite, I, I went on a school journey there many years ago because I'm an old fart now. And I always, the one thing I always remember is there's a, the, oh, that's the uh, M3 you're just going over. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the, at the cathedral, inside the cathedral, there's a uh, statue of a diver, old, old hat, hard hat diver, a guy called William Walker who worked for six years, six hours a day, um, repairing the foundations in absolute darkness. And uh, I, I've got some details here. He put in 25,000 bags of concrete, 115,000 concrete blocks, and 900,000 bricks to save the cathedral. If he hadn't done that, it probably wouldn't be standing now. <laughs> Uh, that's that's a lot of that's a pretty serious dedication. I mean, they made a statue yeah. out of them, so it can't be too too bad. Oh, and he, and he got the order of Victor, the order of Victoria as well. He was made a member of the Victorian order. Nice, which is a nice nice little thing to have. 
Absolutely. All right, so we're leaving uh, Winchester here, uh, crossing over Headbourne, uh, heading towards uh, Springvale. I'm noticing that our terrain here is uh, switching incredibly agricultural. I uh, just kind of taking a peek out here. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, gotten all sorts of pass it over another highway. It looks like I think this is the 272 is what my little note says here. Now, I think an interesting... Oh, in, now, in the UK, you have... Uh, maybe there's something you can answer. You have A's and you have M's for uh, your highways. Uh, what's the difference? Right. Um, M is a motorway. Uh, then you have A roads, which are main roads. And then B roads. And you do even have C roads, but they're never listed as C roads. But basically, um, it works on a spoke system. So the A1 runs from London to up to Scotland, up to Edinburgh. The A2 runs from London to Dover. The A3 runs from London to Portsmouth. The A4 runs from London to Bristol. And the A5 runs from uh, London to Holyhead. And the A6 runs from London up the west coast to Glasgow. And then as you go each gap through the spokes, you add another number. So in fact, you, the A61 goes a little bit further east than the A6, but it should be really the A61. But not a lot of people know that. That's basically how it's supposed to work. Gotcha. Uh, we got a question from uh, two people. First of all, we're an ECOSA server, in case you're curious. Uh, Wayne Stewart asks, uh, good morning. Is it possible to map your propeller RPM to your controller? Um, absolutely. Uh, you're looking for prop pitch. Uh, if I actually hit escape real quick and go over to controls, if I go over to uh, my uh, Twix, which is the Thrix controller system, if I were to quickly uh, go down here, uh, let me grab that for you. Do, 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 do. Propeller. You can see there's a whole element to this that you can go ahead and set your propeller axis to to control your propeller RPM. All right, give that a thing. And we're going to go take a closer dive down here on the rail. Kind of keep an eye on how everything else is looking here. Let's see here. Uh, we're coming up on uh, Popham, I believe it is. That's going to be the next major airport. Yep, we must be heading towards Popham, yep. Yep, so we're going to be swinging there direct. Uh, what is this, Mickledover Station or something like that, I think is our next uh, major stop. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so we're actually able to fly a little bit lower down here on account of the fact that uh, we've got ourselves a little less of that incredibly dense trees. I did shut off damage here on the freak chance that I smack into something, which I've learned a safe way to get out of something I smacked into. So I guess I could be a little bit safer with that going forward. Basically, got to clear our little rails. And again, everything is mostly agricultural here that I've seen so far. Kind of taking a peek out here. I'm just looking real quickly. And we're going to be crossing the 303 in a minute, I believe. Let's see if we got any folks behind us. Eh, we got a couple people. I don't know what an FDCT is. Then we got to cover some bunch of people in diamonds and Cessna's way, way back there behind us as well. All right. Right about to cross. I believe Popham's up there. Now, the interesting thing here is um, I played, uh, what is it called? A train simulator, I think it's called. And there's a couple different generations. Yeah. And I believe they, I don't know that they have a Southampton to London, but I know that they have. Um, uh, Brighton, I believe, is where they can go all the way up to London. That was always kind of a fun early track that I used to do. I've got, I've got Train Simulator as well, and there's, uh, there's definitely London to, um, from sorry, Woking down to Southampton via Guildford, and London to Brighton. Gotcha. Now, I think it's interesting that my family name actually comes from a small village, which is on the Isle of Wight. And I always thought that was kind of interesting. You can actually find it, but they put an E on it. We took the E off when we went off to uh, Ellis Island. All right. <laughs> Something we will not fly over today. Let's go, go lower no. down again. Now, I find it interesting how... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I was just having a bit of bit of trouble sort of commentating with you because I'm watching you on YouTube now. And of course, it's a 30 second delay, like, right? Nine. <laughs> I'll try to do the best I can to uh, kind of say oh, what's coming up here. No problem. Um, coming up on my left is uh, something called White Hill. Right. Not sure where we are there. Have we gone out? Um... Looks pretty good. Just kind of kind of zip along here. Yep, this uh, Popham is basically right off my right wing. There. Actually, we just passed by it. Uh, I can't see it through my little tiny airplane, but that's all right. All right. I've already got somebody basically halfway there, but that's okay. Try not to lose my rail. Oop, and I lost the rail. Ah! Fortunately, it's very difficult to see from the air. You basically have to be right on the darn thing. You need to follow the tree. The normal thing is follow the tree line. You exactly. You see the tree line. Got it. I have found the rail. All right, this is the southwestern main line, I believe. Yeah, it's uh, well, it was what was uh, was called the London and Southwestern Railway um, until it got amalgamated into the uh, Southern Railway in the groupings, which was ooh, between the wars, 
And then, of course, we all became part of British Rail, and then Maggie Thatcher privatised everything, so everything went um, absolutely nuts. It's an absolute nightmare trying to book tickets now on railways because you have loads of private train companies and Network Rail actually run the rail, the track infrastructure. And it's a nightmare in my opinion. I wish we could go back to it being nationalized. <laughs> now in about uh, 30 seconds or so, I'm gonna be hitting the outskirts of Oakley. Uh, anything we should know about that? Oakley? Um, no, my aunt's my aunt's son lives there, or used to. They've just moved. <laughs> she actually lives just off this line. That uh, well, she actually just moved. She's going to be in Basingstoke, so we'll be flying over her uh, house soon. <laughs> All right, <laughs> kind of go rip up. I actually like what they did with the most recent UK update. You know, they really took the time to kind of update some of the architecture here. Looks a little less generic mm -hmm. now, which is actually pretty cool. Kind of flying up parallel currently. Uh, the rail is basically right there where that funky conglomeration of trees is. Just trying to appreciate the countryside a little bit. I'm going to go zip through a uh, super low altitude. Good thing there are no birds in Flight Simulator, or uh, this would have ended really bad already for us. Give myself a little bit of upward trim. All right, we're going to be taking our first major little right turn here and uh, kind of heading directly into the basically London itself. Yeah, keep an eye on things. All right, the whole train should start swinging east in just a moment, but I lost it, so now i got to climb myself back up. All right, we're going through uh, Basingstoke uh, at this time. All right, coming up to Basingstoke, yep. All right, there's the rail line again. It seems to be okay. Of course, uh, do you have the expression, you know, the wrong side of the tracks in the UK as well? Not really. I mean, it's yes, we do have it, but it's only picking it up from um, American TV shows <laughs> as such. No, nowhere is the wrong side of the tracks. <laughs> I just think that's kind of funny, you know. But it's in the UK, so you're, the wrong side of the tracks is actually the other side of the track? Yeah. <laughs> I think it works that way, yeah. but that's okay. All right, so... Uh, no, we're, we're coming up... Yep, go ahead. We're coming up to Basingstoke now. Big, big conglomerate town. Um, lots of people will uh, commute from here up to London. But the only exciting thing I know about Beijing, so is the head, headquarters of the AA is here. And for all our, the people who aren't British, the AA is the Automobile Association. So it's uh, uh, one of our major reco uh, car recovery people. Gotcha, because we have the AAA in the United States, but that, that's a private yes, organization. Yeah. Similar though, similar. Same right. thing, same sort of thing. Yeah, I'm noticing that the uh, rail lines are opening up significantly here, and I'm seeing a lot more cargo trains, at least from, you know, the uh, geography and stuff like that. Or the satellite photos, I yeah. should say. Oh, I'm about to get passed by somebody going, whoa, really fast. Oh, boy, power lines, power lines. <laughs> going up. All right, I'm noticing that uh, the buildings are getting bigger, and we're getting a lot less farms. Yeah, well, we, it's um, all this area, it's sort of like big towns and cities uh, with, you know, in, interspersed into the countryside. So, uh, yeah. All right. So uh, somebody asked a question, oh. uh, Jim Bao. Um, I'm in ECUSA, but I am in all players. Are you going to say something, Simon? I'm sorry. I was just going to say, next place we've got after Basingstoke is Farnborough, which... Uh, That's going to be up on the right, I think. That'll be a, well, we'll we go through Farmer and um, the RAE, which is the Royal Aircraft Establishment, it's actually now the Royal Aerospace Establishment, will uh -huh. be on our right. Yep, uh, that's going to be um, Odam, I probably pronounce it terribly, Airbase I know is coming up on our right also, Farmer is oh, going to be a bit of the ways up, so are we coming up that's on a right. hook? Oh, yeah. Whoop, just got past. Hook, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hook's on the commuter tail. Yeah, now if I turned on my graphics and got rid of some of the trees, I'd be able to follow the rail a lot safer here. <laughs> this is just fun. Nice but like I say, we, all, all you need to do is follow the tre follow the tree line. I mean, I quite often look on old railways on things like Google Earth, and it's so easy to spot them from the from the air. Definitely, definitely. But the trees tend to be kind of big. But I'm amazed yeah. at how forested this region is. It's just like, you know, lots of farm and everything's just kind of like, whoop tree. Kind of reminds me a little bit where I live, but the hills seem to be a little bit on the lower side. But uh, definitely a similar kind of idea here. All right, I'm going to come take us uh, back down to our rails here. I think we've got enough room to come through. All right, this is getting a little dangerous, but all right. I just got passed by somebody. He's uh, coming up right up there. I'm sure this is a great way to stay under the radar if you're literally under the tree line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I believe that's a Cap 10. I opted for the not stunt plane today because I didn't want to do anything too, too excessive here. 
All right, come sneak in this way. Oh, yeah, this is good. Now we got ourselves in a good spot. I'm afraid to uh, change my view here because I'm going to go smacking into something if I don't watch carefully. I appreciate the fact that the folks in front of me actually did turn on the little uh, uh, beacon light there. All right, so we're coming up coming on uh, Fleet in about a minute or so. Uh, what were we going to say? I'm sorry. I was going to say, I think we're going through Hook now. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, we passed through. But of course, I'm a, I'm a little bit behind you, like I said. Yeah. I'll try to call them as I see them kind of coming up. Oop, and that is an overpass. Oh! <laughs> this is kind of dangerous. But I'm glad we finally got... It seems like the uh, railway has opened up, like we've added more tracks to the section. Is that on account of what you were saying with the commuters going between England and uh, back where we were at on basic uh, stuff? Well, no, not so much. Most most of the railway lines were built as just twin tracks. Um, you do have lots of four uh, four track areas but of course the thing is land down in the south around the south is at a premium and they just haven't got the money to sort of like buy the um land up to widen the tracks the the only real exception was the west coast uh main uh, uh, sorry not the west coast main line the great western railway because when that was built by brunel he used a seven foot and a quarter inch gauge so when they Changed, ripped all that up and changed it a standard cage over one weekend. Um, they had room to make it up to four track in a lot of places. All right, we'll get a little bit more altitude here. Uh, right. Kind of swinging around. Uh, I just got passed by an Airbus. <laughs> <laughs> um, figure that one out for me, will you? I also saw somebody at a Beechcraft ate it. I think they got a little too close to the track there. Um, I'll come up on my right is Fleet. Anything you can tell us about that? Uh, only a famous thing for fleet is it's the services on the M3. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm also <laughs> looking off my uh, right wing here about my 2 o'clock, and I can see the control tower for Farnsborough Air Force. Or, it's just a regular Farnborough, international, yeah. right? No, no, no. That's uh, famous for the Farnborough Air Show. Uh, it goes in there, and uh, it's also headquarters of the Air, in Air Accident Investigation Branch. So That's any NTSB. accident yeah. aircraft, air accident, in uh, the UK gets investigated there. Gotcha. And then it uh, looks like Farnborough itself, uh, we're just about to hit probably in the next 30 seconds or so. That looks to be very yeah. industrialized compared to a lot of what we've seen so far. Yeah, I, I, I haven't been to Farnborough for years. All so right, we're back up to four tracks again also. Now, I assume uh, they do manufacturing here, or does the manufacturing of aircraft exist in other parts of the UK? Oh, no, no, they don't manufacture aircraft there. No, it's, it is purely a research place and, like I say, the air accident investigation branch. But it, sta it started out as the Royal Balloon Factory, would you believe, before, <laughs> uh, even before people started flying. That's awesome. Yeah, I was thinking of the Montgolfier and all that kind of stuff, like in the really, 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 really early days of all that. Yeah, I think it started uh, about 1902, so it was you know, even before the Bright, Wright brothers flew. Okay, so it looks like we're just about to cross a major highway leaving out of Farnborough here. Kind of having to double task here, try not to hit the trees at the same time as uh, navigating. <laughs> now, the, the, the little light support you aircrafts. Oop, you're going to say? I was going to say, the next thing you want to watch out for is if you can see any rail lines coming in from your right-hand side, because yep. that will be Brookwood. Yeah, and, just uh, went tearing across them. About, right. On your, I don't know if you can see on your right-hand side, it's what used to be the biggest cemetery in the world. Oh. It's uh, now the biggest cemetery in Europe because uh, this was the end of the London Necropolis Railway. Yep. And they used to bring people out to bury them in Brookwood. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess. And, and there's still there's still the facade of the old railways next door to Waterloo Station in London. Interesting. Now, I noticed uh, apparently the Ministry of Defense is a training area right off to our east also, or right wing, I should say. It would be the south. Uh, that would be down towards Odium, I think, yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, of course, you've got Aldershot. Aldershot Barracks is down that way. Yeah. Gotcha. And there's something about Purebright, which is an Army training center? Purebright is also an Army training place, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. And I'm, I have a feeling that we're going to be... Uh, Brookwood's coming up in a moment. We haven't quite hit that. Probably in the next 30 seconds or so. Yeah. Right, I'm just going to go back down to following the rail here. We'll come back, back up. Yeah, the rail is definitely a lot easier to find and locate in this part compared to what it was in the beginning. 
It'll swing us down. I think we just went by a siding there. All right. It's full of throttle. Yeah, I hope the uh, they don't normally plant trees in the middle of the railroad there, but that's all right. Now, so you're telling uh, me they we, used to... So now, why do they need a special railway to bring people out of the city in order to uh, plant them down here? Because basically, they just ran out of room in Victorian London. So uh, they reckon there's at least a quarter of a million people buried at Brookwood. There's a military cemetery. There's even an American military cemetery there. Yes. Uh, but the... Third, the, the, you could come first class, second class, or third class. The third class are mainly the poor of the parish, and they weren't allowed to have markers. So they know there's a quarter of a million odd gravestones, but there's a lot more people than that there. Yep, this whole area to my right. Yeah, I can definitely see little yeah. pieces of it kind of sticking out there. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So that's Brookwood, and uh, that's A33. And, uh, what is it? A322. There we go. All right, now I'm seeing up in front, what is this, a uh, hook heath I think we're coming up on? We're coming into the next place we will be Woking. We'll be gotcha. Next. That looks like it's a very, very, all the build, I'm noticing we're getting a lot less trees and a lot more houses. <laughs> getting to the suburbs, I guess. Yeah, we're, get, we're getting into pro proper commuter area now. You know, Woking is, um, I, I worked in Woking for a year and the vast majority of people used to go to London. <laughs> The one thing I remember about one thing I remember about Woking is that while I was there, they were building a new multi-story car park, and they're about to open about a month from opening it when someone suddenly realised you could get in but you couldn't get out. <laughs> so, That's amazing. So they had to build a new bit. <laughs> yeah, the density here is incredible. Like it's just house after house after house, and it's all packed. I mean, you got you can definitely see the trees kind of peeking through, but it's just oh my wow, Woking is a giant station. They got yeah, sightings so like you've got crazy. The line that came in from the right that goes down to Guildford as well, so it is a junction. Yeah, and I see there's some big, probably hotels or, like you said, parking garages or car parks right over there on the right as we're kind of ripping through Woking here. Oh man, I would yeah. not want to have those houses. Let's watch the train go by every day. Ugh, that would get rough. No, I think I'm being passed by somebody else here a little bit above me, but that's all right. I'm afraid to uh, touch any controls now, going at this speed at this altitude. All right, start pulling myself up. Mm -hmm. And they're coming up on sheer water in about, I don't know, 15 seconds or so, which is up on my left. Well, you're just about to go over the M25, uh, which you'll see a big dual, uh, dual carriageway that goes across in front of you. And just after that on the right, you should be able to pick up the oval, which is the old track of Brooklyn's motor racing circuit. That's not the which, uh, uh, oh, cricket oval, is it? Go on. No, 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 no. No, it's, it's called Brooklyn's. It's the first purpose-built motor racing circuit in the world that lasted um, between the wars between 1907 and 1939 and then Vickers moved in there and they started building aircraft there and so it's got a runway as well but you can't use it because they've built things across it but you can still see it if you go high enough you'll um, you'll see it just after you cross the motorway you'll see the oval on your right hand side gotcha. it's a 30 okay. degree banking People went over the top of it quite often. Hmm, I'm gonna uh, switch over to my no, third person view and take a look here. So I noticed a lot of industrial buildings. I'm just crossing the motorway now. And lots and lots That's of industrial right. oh, I see it, yep, yep, there it is. Can't miss it. Oh, it's got a nice little That's squiggle right. to it. It's, it's, well, that's right, you got like a little club track in the inside oh, as well. Oh yeah, but look at that. And that. you can see where the runway is too, or where it should be. Yeah, that's right. Oh but yeah. It's all, all concrete. All concrete, and uh, they even built a bridge to carry part of the banking over the river way. It was, it was a hell of an undertaking at the time. Hey, that was okay. That was easy to find. Uh, that's right next to the uh, poopy plant too. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, dive ourselves back in. I think we're starting to get. Uh oh, I'm looking at my 12 o'clock, and I see a very tall skyscraper way off in the distance there. That's probably the shard. Gotcha. Which we will fly by. All right, let's take ourselves back down here. So uh, we got Waybridge right off my left wing. Then we're coming up on, it looks like there's a couple lakes or reservoirs or something like that. Uh, where are we? Um... Oh yes, the reservoirs, you got the uh, QE2 and the Island Barn reservoirs on the left. QE2, so coming... I love that. Yeah, yeah, Queen Elizabeth II, I should be probably, yes, I should say. Oh, yes, that, I, I just saw your um, 
skyscraper. That's the chard yeah. way off uh, in the distance. All right, I'm sneaking uh, up on something yeah, here. So, All right. So, so you'll have the reservoirs on the left, and on your right, you'll have Sandown Park, which is a horse race track. Ooh, I got to try track that one down. Each... Uh, this is going to be impossible to find. <laughs> is it before the motorway or after the motorway? What's that? Ah, uh, the Sandown Park. No, it's, it's uh, as you go past the uh, lakes, it's on your right-hand side. You should see it. It's a nice uh, nice green oval. Gotcha. i got my eyes open here. All right, the reservoir is going to be right off my left wing now. So look out my right wing. It should wing. be just about on your right-hand side. I'm going to try to find it. I'll switch over to third person for just a second. Oh, I'm passing somebody here. Oh, we got some up. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, you can't miss that. <laughs> Yeah, I hate to say it, I think that's a better landing strip than uh, what we saw that was the actual landing strip. Oh, it looks like you have a little um, motor cross side of track in the middle of it as well. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, <laughs> I so think there's a golf course in as well. Oh, yeah, look at the little... Yeah, you got like a, they try to shove everything into this chunk of land here. Oh, yeah, you got the little place where you can park and everything. I don't see a cricket pitch, though. I'm disappointed. Or is that what those are? Ah, oh, well. No, no. All right. It looks like we're having a junction between two major railways coming up in a second. At least that's what my brain's interpreting them as. Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, you should be coming up not far off um, the line that comes in from Hampton Court, right. which will be on your left about a couple of three miles away. Gotcha. Nope, I just passed right over it. I know you got a little delay there, but hey, we're making do with what we got. All right, kind of go, come swinging along here. All right, what's the next thing we're going to be looking for? I know we're starting to get really close to uh, London proper here. Uh, we'll be coming. Well, if you've seen Hampton Court over to your left, the next thing that'll be on your left is Wimbledon. Oh, Wimbledon. Which is that one I actually about. know. And it actually does. You can see they've got the uh, they've rendered this the picture of Centre Court quite well. You might should be able to see it. All right, so that's the uh, Wimbledon Common. Is it called? No, no, Wimbledon as in um, the, the lawn tennis, tennis place. It's actually the lawn tennis and croquet club. All right, that's going to be tough to find. Do you know if it's off the left or the right of the railway? It's on, it's on your left. It's about a mile away. And you, if you come up a little bit, you should spot it no problem at all. All right, I'm going to try. I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh, boy. Yeah, we got ourselves it's another, a, uh, looks like a water treatment plant coming up on my left now. And we have a really, really nice soccer club. Or I should say football, my bad. I wonder if that's what we're looking for. Uh, oh, it could be. It might look, could look like a football stadium. Gotcha. I'm just looking around. I do not see it. But maybe I've already been ripping by it already and just completely missed it. Looks like a school right there. Uh, what's that? I know what those are. <laughs> Let's only catch up to you. It looks like there's already another country club coming up on the left also. All right, we'll go ahead and dive back down as we uh, start cruising into uh, London proper here. All right, come on down. I just got passed again, but that's all right. Yeah, the uh, rail is much wider here than it was uh, at the beginning for sure. Yeah, yeah, you, you definitely it's uh, all four track out here. Gotcha. We're also getting some, um, I'm going to call it terrain. <laughs> got a couple mountains here. Well, not mountains, you know, little hills, little hills. Now, the interesting thing is, uh, maybe you can uh, speak to this. My understanding is that uh, curry is very popular in London or England. C curry is very popular everywhere. <laughs> it's, uh, it's almost overtaken fish and chips as a national dish. <laughs> if it hasn't, probably has overtaken fish and chips as the national dish. That is so funny. I mean, I love Indian food myself. And it's just one of those things that when somebody told me that, I'm like, what? But um, I guess it would make sense. Oh, yeah. All right, we're crossing. Uh, this is Wimbledon. Okay, we just got here. This is the uh, main rail. Okay. This is uh, the main rail station. Oh, so if you look to your left from the rail station, you should see Wimbledon. Yeah, the, there it is. The, the yep, yeah, there it is. Nice. Hey, we did it, which means we're also starting to get very close to uh, downtown here. Uh, Wimbledon Park will be right up on our left, I believe. It's just interesting how close everything is. I mean, not that this is a big country, but, it, you know, there's some stuff to see for sure. All right, taking a look at that. Wow, the density is going through the roof here. We'll see when the uh, stuttering begins. Yeah, my, 
when I was doing this a couple of days ago, I was already starting. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I can't, that's one Very thing I'm impressed with this flight simulator is it really does look good. You know, definitely the dynamics could get a little bit better for sure, but like, I think it's, it's pretty amazing. I got to take a peek at all the folks behind me for a second here. I'm going to give myself a little bit of trim. Let's see how we're doing back there. Oh my, there's somebody about to rear end us. Ah, that looks pretty good. Okay, I believe we're coming up on Clapham Junction in about a minute or so. I see. Yep, oh, I just got passed by a Cessna. Where's the horn on this thing? Oh, uh, this is Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, if you fail today. All right, we got somebody flying near the shard, so we're going to come meet them. <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to let you know when we cross into Clapham Junction, and we are there. Wow. Okay, that's the line. Line comes in from uh, Brighton on the right hand side. And then just after Clapham Junction, you'll see the line that goes over the over the Thames. And the next thing we should see is Battersea Power Station. Oh, see, I know that one from Pink Floyd videos. I'm just not going to recognize that's the big right. pig flying over the top of it. And again, I think they use that it's power station for like every movie ever. Well, it's not a power station anymore. It's now an art place. But uh, <laughs> just after the power, just after the power station on the left is Nine Elms, which is took over from Covent Garden as our main fruit and veg market in the 70s. But it's also where the original terminus of the railway was before they built Waterloo. Right. Uh, what side is the power station on? Sorry. It will be on your left because the it's, it's it's the power station is right against the river. Got it. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. I need to change my view and pay attention to where I'm flying here, though. Yeah, that's the Thames, for sure. Oh, boy. Okay, Oh, now we need to figure out where we are here. So it looks like uh, the railway basically follows the Thames and kind of comes around, taking us to London City. So uh, we'll get the, uh, the London tour sorry. here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, coming up on, uh, looks like uh, the city of Westminster is going to be up on our left wing in just a moment, from what I can see. Oh, I think I recognize that structure. Hey, the clock isn't set correctly, Anna. What's the deal with that? Um, well, I think on the real one, they still got all the scaffolding around it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we did pretty well getting it. This is actually a very big building. Like, I did not realize it was quite that large. All right, I'm going to go take a quick little uh, 360, do a pylon turn around uh, Westminster here. Nice. That is so cool. They really they did a nice job with that. That's, that, that's pretty slick looking. Uh, I'm going to take us down towards the Thames here. Of course, we've uh, lost the runway there, or they should say the railway, but we'll catch back up to it. Nice. And uh, we're coming up on uh, Southwark is uh, going to be our next place right up on our right. Yeah, that's Southwark. Gotcha. I right, try to <laughs> refine everything. It's, it's difficult to find the rail in a nice bitty city. And we're about to crash into something that looks like a very tall pyramid. I'm trying to work out where you are because you're about, like I said, I'm about 15 seconds behind yeah. you. Oh, the tall pyramid, that's the shard. Yeah, that's what I figured, yeah. It's kind of neat, though. I'm actually I'm going to go take a look at this thing. You know, while we're here, right? I mean, we violated every air law in the world, so we might as well, you know, just keep violating them. Are you, are you flown over Waterloo Station? So that's the end of the line. Gotcha. So now we're on our own, I guess. Now we're going to go find London City Airport. Dead easy. Just follow the river. Gotcha. <laughs> And there it is. Nice. All right, we'll go follow the Thames then instead of following the river since we have gone ahead and lost everything. Now, is the uh, Thames as um, polluted as I think it might be? Or is it actually pretty blue like we see? No, no, no. It's, it's much better now. It's, uh, we have salmon up it, uh, seals, beluga whales, all sorts of things come up the uh, Thames now. So it is so much cleaner than it was. Gotcha. And we're passing whapping on my uh, left wing there. That's whopping. Ah, I knew I'd get one wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but it's spelled whapping. Yeah, it's whopping deal. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I'd have to get at least one wrong. And then I've got something, uh, the Isle of the Dogs, I believe, we're approaching. Isle of, yeah, the Isle of Dogs. Yeah, we're coming up on the Isle of Dogs. Now, I imagine there's a reason why they name it that. I suspect there is, but I can't remember what it is. <laughs> now, it's actually an island because it looks like it's got a canal that kind of separates it from the rest of the land there. Well, it's uh, it's the docks that go across it. The Isle of Dogs was basically all can was all dock areas. They built about three or four different docks across it because it was easy to get in for ships to get into. Oh, uh, oh, oh, big stadium. 
I think we know what that stadium uh, is. Oh, yeah, the O2. There it is. Yeah, I always yeah, I see pictures of this particular one. I wonder if they're playing today. I'll have to kind of take a peek into this little teeny tiny opening they have at the, at the top here. Swinging around nice and gentle. Nope, they got it closed off. We wouldn't know what they're playing today. The parking looks pretty good, though. I'd take a nice the thing look. on the O2 is that if, if you look inside it, there's a little chimney sticking up, which is the ventilation tower for the uh, um, Blackpool Tunnel, which goes underneath it. Oh. All right, come swinging around. And there's London City Airport. Ah, we found it. All right, we'll go ahead and bring oh, ourselves... Missed out the, go ahead. the Thames Barrier's not there, though. <laughs> Oh, so, okay. Well, we can kind of make it out a little bit. And that's, I guess, to discourage people to try to drive their boats along the runway there. All right, let me give myself a little bit of trim, find myself a little bit of traffic pattern. Let's see how the folks behind us are doing there. I'm sorry I've uh, been uh, distracted, but that's okay. It happens sometimes. All right, keep an eye on things, make sure they're okay. <laughs> All right, going to slow us down just a teeny tiny bit. And it looks like we got a runway 9, which means it's going to be a runway 27 in the other direction. Somebody in a two. Oh, yeah, got the now, are they expanding the other runway? No, I don't think so. I, I haven't heard there's any plans to. Gotcha, because I'm noticing this is huge area of construction, like right here on the uh, right side of the runway. Oh, that's. Uh, I think that's just where the XL Arena is, which is actually the one of our temporary Nightingale hospitals at the minute. Gotcha. But, right, we're gonna uh, come yeah. swinging around. There's, so there's three docks here. You've got the Albert Dock and the Victoria Dock, and then the uh, I'm trying to think what it is. George V Dock is the one against the river. Gotcha. And, and although the Thames Barrier is not here, you can see the piers of the Woolwich Ferry. Come swinging around out into the Thames. Taking our nice base turn. I love this aircraft, especially since it's in kilometers an hour. So it's, I'm sitting there as, you know, an ignorant American going, how fast am I going? As long as it's in the green, I guess it's okay. All right, come bringing us around. Get a nice look at the city. This must be so exciting taking off in a jet because you're basically pointing right at the city and you go ripping around and shaking everybody's windows. That's got to be fun. Now, for anybody looking for interesting trivia, your approaches into London City Airport are tremendously steep, as opposed to the usual three degrees that can be, you know, six, seven degrees, which is basically like riding an elevator downwards. It's crazy. All right, I'm going to put this thing gently down on the ground here. That looks like uh, I'm about to smack into this guy. Oh, I just got passed again. That's all right. Boom, boom, we're here. <laughs> awesome. Hit the brakes. Er and I'll just get myself right off this runway. So, it, whoa, somebody else just smacked into me. Get myself off the runway here to a nice and safe spot. Tap that off. Now, do you know if they have any other plans for London City Airport? Because I know that there are some aircraft that can actually take off from here and fly all the way to the United States on one tank of gas, which blows my mind. Yeah, I, I, I honestly don't know what, what the uh, plans are. I mean, there's been enough arguments about putting a third runway at Heathrow and that I think... Uh, if they try to build another runway at London City, there'd be all sorts of ructions. <laughs> I like how, like, I mean, like, again, I'm going to say in a really ignorant statement here, but it's like everything is more of like at a national level in England, whereas like where I live, you know, because it, everything's just such a bigger scale that it's like everything's at like kind of a state level. It's just it's kind of neat. It's yeah. like, you know, I couldn't tell you what kind of air runways they have in you know, Washington, D.C., but it's just it, it's just interesting. Just really, really interesting. All right, let's go ahead and get ourselves uh, safely up to our little taxiway. I'm trying not to go swimming here. I tap that down, look behind me. I'm about to get hit again. All right, go sneak up here. That looks like a good spot. I think Piku Piku Piku's got the right idea. Oh, we went into the water. <laughs> I, that's what I was trying not to do. I could have told you that, though. All right, I'm going to go park myself right over here with this little group of folks. And I think we've done a pretty good job today. Uh, we actually made it all the way to our destination, which is always nice when that happens. Going to go ahead and tap the brakes there. All right. Let's see how everything is looking behind us. I'll uh, we'll go collect a good number of folks to come take our pictures. Um, Simon, were there any other quick things you wanted to tell us about London that maybe I'd, we didn't get to? Oh, I can tell you also. So if, if you went about another half a mile down the runway, you'd come to where... Uh, Silverton Munitions Works used to be in the First World War. And I can tell you a quick story. My grandmother, who was waiting for a tram at Elton Church, which is about four or five miles south of where we are now, was waiting because she was working as a munitionette in the First World War. 
at Woolwich Arsenal uh, when she saw Silvertown Munition Works go up. About <laughs> 200 tons of TNT went up. Oh, that's not so good. And, uh, no, I mean, it was a hell of a blast. It, where we were in the O2 Arena, there's even some of the debris got to there and it sort of like ignited a gas holder. So, uh, yeah. There's all sorts of history around here. I, I, I could speak for ages about it because, <laughs> like I say, I, I lived for 20 odd years the other side of the river in Greenwich. <laughs> Go for a swim there. I don't know what that was about. I think it's funny. There's this guy right over here, a racer, is probably not with us today. And uh, we just scared him pretty good. All right. Uh, we're going to do our quick encore there. And then we'll do uh, some. Actually, before we do our encore, we'll do uh, some quick QA. Uh, does anybody have any uh, flight simulator based questions? Any uh, questions for uh, Simon, our resident UK expert? Any questions on the uh, CTLS here, which uh, got us nice and safely? I wonder how much fuel we used, actually. Uh, let's see. Eh, we only used 10% of our fuel, so we can get all the way to Scotland on the gas we got left here. So as I usually say, is there anything uh, you guys have a question on? Again, I've got Antonio with us today, too, if you'd like to answer anything about any gas turbines or anything like that. Obviously, we've got Simon if you have any UK questions. If you have any uh, flight submitted questions, uh, feel free to bother me as well. Obviously, this is a 15-second delay, so I'll give you guys a few moments to kind of answer as I kind of make my way back to the runway. It's a bummer our little uh, networking thing didn't work, but again, that version was brand new, so who knows what happened. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn down. Also, I did notice you, 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 you definitely didn't have as much stuttering as I had when I was trying this through the week. So whether that's just because you got a, a better PC or than me, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I did have problems. All right, awesome. Thanks, Antonio. All right, got to go ahead and give that full power. We'll go ahead and head on. I'm going to just kind of make my way down the Thames. Now, you're going to have to forgive my awful geography here. If we head east along the Thames, uh, what is that port does that take us to? Uh, well, your, uh, your first port will be Tilbury. Uh, there's, one at, there's one at Dartford as well. There's a ferry terminal at Dartford. So um, there's all sorts, sorts of things down there. So what is the mouth of the uh, Thames? Right at the mouth. Uh, I suppose the last place would be South End on the Essex coast and Margate on the Kent coast, which are both they're both um, tourist places. South End has the longest pier in the world. Interesting. And uh, the other thing I like to do at the end of these videos, too, is if anybody is looking for any future videos uh, coming up, things that you'd like to see, I've, I think I've done an okay job in the last couple of weeks of answering a lot of questions that people had from last time. So are there any videos that you folks would like to see? I always like the silence. <laughs> just kind of uh, cruising along the Thames here. I'm looking for a really nice place to uh, put my uh, aircraft into the water here, but I, I just got to find just the right spot, just the right spot. You know how it goes. I like how you get these weird visual glitches where there's clearly a pier of some sort, but it draws it as water. So you get these like, hmm, what's that about? What are the, What is the secret close stealth technology that the uh, British have developed here? All right, I'm just I don't trying see to work out if you'd, if you'd have cross nest sewage works down here or not. <laughs> There's definitely uh, some many, many, many silos to my west here. Uh, no, uh, cross nest will be on the south side of the river. Gotcha. Um, All right. I guess this is probably a good place to go ahead and uh, give us a break then. I don't see any questions coming through. So we'll go ahead and uh, absolutely ruin this extremely expensive aircraft in a dramatic sort of a way. I pull myself up real nice and steep. I like my little knife edge turn, which you wouldn't do in an aircraft this small. And kill the power. Push hard on the rudder. Whoa, and it just sort of falls. Whee! <laughs> All right, here we go. Whee! <laughs> All right, folks, uh, thank you as always. And uh, thank you to Simon for uh, all your support today. You're welcome. No problem. Absolutely. I'm sorry our little uh, idea of our shared cockpit didn't work, but hey, sometimes things come up from time to time. As always, uh, folks, uh, keep an eye out on my community page on uh, YouTube, and I'll kind of respond to any things. How about some island hopping? Uh, this is a good idea. i got to do something like that in Indonesia because there's plenty of islands to pick from over there, so we'll definitely check that out in the future. Good idea, Nick. Thank you. Other than that, have a great afternoon, great day, everybody, and uh, stay safe.